to another date on the Journalist Hangout Show. I'm Citizen Jones. Today on the program, hear this, mm-hmm. President Joe Biden of America sends powerful delegation to Tinubu's inauguration, just as a U.S.-based Nigerian doctor asks the Supreme Court to delay his inauguration at uh, Tinubu's inauguration. Now, federal government set to save 7 trillion naira as Dangote refinery petrol hits the market in July. And later on, this one, President Buhari inaugurates second Niger Bridge as other and the other six legacy projects. I'm hanging out with Baba Jide Kolade Otitoju, BKO. Uh, Jide, I greet you. I greet you, the citizen. Yeah. Land is come. Okay. Uh, so, so you submit it to me <laughs> at the, at the, end, of, uh, at the you, end of the program. We'll discuss it. Uh, we'll submit it to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yinka Oyegwile is here. Yinka, I haven't seen you since this year. So, Happy New Year to you. Same to you. Good. Even though the year is almost going to uh, have one. Yeah, here we go again. <laughs> All right. The team is ready. I hope you are. Now, let's go. You know, in less than six days... 16th Nigerian President and Commander-in-Chief, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinobu, will be sworn in at the Eagle Square in Abuja. And so ahead of the event, United States President Joe Biden has detailed a nine-man high-powered delegation to represent the United States. The team would be led by the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Marcia Fuj, and other high-ranking officers of the United States, including the U.S. Director of Trade and Development Agency, Eno Ebong of Nigeria. But rather curiously, a United States-based medical doctor and presidential candidate on the platform of the African Renaissance Party, ARP, Ada Obepa, wants the Supreme Court to delay the inauguration of Tinubu until a final resolution of his standing matter before the Apex Court. Now, many people aren't done yet with some of us. So it seems. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's a thing of joy that um, the world is celebrating with Nigeria. Re- regardless. Regardless of um, the Sabaratlin that... Uh, it's all over the place. To have 24 years of uninterrupted democracy yeah. is yeah. a feat. We may not always value ourselves. Mm. You know, just like where you work. Some people may not, they may not appreciate you where you work. But the truth is, Nigeria the Nigerian democracy is growing. Mm. In the past, the military will have stepped in and chased everybody oh, yeah. away. But you can <coughs> see 24 unbroken, unbroken years. years. 24 mm. years on the bounce. It is a tremendous achievement. And the world identifies with us. America identifies with us. America cannot wait to do business with Nigeria. Mm. Nigerians new leaders because that would take office. Yes, because yeah. this is a country with tremendous potential. It's just that we've not found the right balance, you know, um, the and rhythm. the right balance of leadership and um, endeavor. Mm. The moment we can have consistent good leadership, maybe for a period of 15 years, 10, 15 years, the story of Nigeria will change. Yeah. <clears throat> but the world already knows the potential of Nigeria, and they don't joke with us. Mm. Look at the call that um, the U.S. Secretary of State made the other day, unsolicited. Wasn't Tinobu that made the call? People have been saying, oh, um, Tinobu has been shopping for international recognition after a rigged election and all that. Oh, and I was the American number four man making an unsolicited call and saying, look, about 20 minutes. look, we are ready to work with you, yeah. uh, with your country, and all that. It makes me happy because, look, it is not about Tinobu as a person. 
But this judge who claimed the other day that he would leave Nigeria if Tinobu won the election was saying in an interview, I think with Punch, that look, I will pray for him succeed. to succeed because Nigeria needs to succeed. So that is the thing. No one knows whether he still has plans to go to Ghana or whatever. I believe that for a lot of them, they had no plan to go anywhere. They said those things because they thought he would not win. Okay. Now that he has Natural. won, yes. Now that he has won, they are like, oh, second, I, I, second I, base. Jerry. I shouldn't have said this. <laughs> I shouldn't have said this, but I will yeah. use Oboju to remain here. Mm. You know, that is the reality. Yeah. America values Nigeria as an African leader, a leader on the continent. And uh, our inauguration, America is represented, well represented. Yeah. You know? So, and there are other world leaders that are coming. Yeah. Our problems will not go away with the inauguration, but no, no, no. We, we have can always chart, we can chart a new a new uh, course. Course. It is yes, possible. It is possible, but people Nigerians have to realize that nation building is not the job of the leaders alone. Everyone must play his part. The yeah. fellow who disobeys traffic law, who will see. Uh, the red light and keep on moving. Who will see uh, the BRT lane and and and, uh, and, drive. and drive right into it mm. and blame the uh, search engine? All of those people, they need to tell themselves the truth. Nigeria belongs to in all the, of us. If moments. Nigeria fails, we all fail. That's it. It is not uh, Tinobu uh, Afia alone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tinobu will do his own and go. Buari. Has done his own. He is already quarter to they, go. They say soldier come, soldier go. Bias. That's the way it is. So yes, the rest of us remain. Yeah, Inka, you know, just before we came on, I I, I talked about the Yoruba proverb I ran into. Yes. Uh, they say if the hen not die, you no know, means they make we throw away the eggs at all. Mm. It's just like saying you don't throw away the baby with the bath water. Mm. But you see, in all these, I must say that. I, as an individual, I still remain unchanged. I'm not excited by mm. the American delegation. Not because I don't like America. I love America. I've visited America several times, and I love their country. But the question is, why must we always wait or feel happy when we have foreign endorsement? Mm. Let's think about it. If the American government has said something contrary, Will the party then, have been happy about yeah. it? Will they cry about it? Yeah. No. So we must, as individuals and as people, come to the reality that we don't need any foreign endorsement. Whether America says they are sending delegation or not, we have had our election. It is good if they say well, yes. We are a sovereign nation. Exactly. So why must we celebrate that America said that they are sending 10-man delegation or 20-man delegation? Mm -hmm. For what? If we have an election and we have agreed or the INEC has ruled that the election, this, this is the winner. Must the winner seek the endorsement of foreign power. Because if, as Blinken called the other day, the opposition, the LP and the PDP that were saying they were not happy, they would have gone everywhere to yeah. ce celebrate that we told you, we told you. But now, this one again, we have this, we are all uh, celebrating that America has said, yeah, it is good. But we should not say stop by... Yeah, endorsement. Because whatever any country does in the world, mm. they think first of their own interest. Yeah. So we should also think of a uh, standstill traffic. I went down from my car, picked the can, and, uh, uh, and, and I knocked. Went down. The man didn't answer. The driver too. So I went to the uh, yes, wiper and I hung the thing there. Exactly. Mm. The driver came down and was raking. But I guess the man knew that what he did was wrong. Yeah. He now beckoned on his driver that he should pick it and put it inside. And I said, look, these are the same people. That time I was driving a car that had no aircon. 
But the truth of it is that you will see, if it were to be a downfall driver, you will say, eh, no, he's part mm. of them. But yeah. somebody being driven a big man. Yeah. So when we sit down at, in our home and say Nigeria is failing, Nigeria is failing, America is succeeding because every citizen does what he's supposed to That's do. That's it, huh? the offender. Exactly. Yeah, does, so, does not. Jidim, the second leg of this story, a U.S.-based Nigerian medical uh, doctor, Ada Obekba, that's his name, says the Supreme Court should not, uh, the inauguration must be on hold until the Supreme Court determines uh, this case. Uh, how, how do you react to this? One, he is not an interested party. I mean, he is not, he didn't take part in the election. Does even, it really matter? Even if he did. You see, um, I pity him because he's a victim of injustice. But an election conducted since 2011 has more than 10 years ago. Mm. You want your matter result <laughs> while it doesn't get results in a year. The inauguration should wait. And by the way, how many elections between then and now? That's the point I'm making. I'm talking about 12 years ago. 12 years ago. It's a farcical comedy. When he came into power 2015, yeah. he has spent eight years eight now. Years. He's on his way back Out. to Dabra. Now, <laughs> it, is, it is wrong to not put people's pictures on ballot materials and all that. Mm. I sympathize with him. But he cannot put our inauguration in abeyance. Nobody will allow that to happen. And all of the people hitting their heads against the wall, struggling to have that inauguration stopped because the person who emerged as winner is somebody that they hate. It's not just a question of, oh, uh, it's not my choice. There is deep-seated hatred for the individual. Because the extent to which some people are going, you can only see hatred. Nothingness. Nothingness. Mm. So, the, you, you can't put our inauguration in abeyance because it will cause a reconstitutional crisis. Mm. Buhari is not permitted to spend one day yes, more in office. Yeah. He has to go back to Daura, from Daura back to it's a Halilu Dantoro residence in, in Kaduna. That is the plan. He said he will first go there, then return to Kaduna home. He has done his best. He's on his way out. No one will be able to mm. keep the president in office longer than Necessary. permitted by the yeah. law, mm. no matter how they feel. They can go to all the courts in the country. No one will be able to stop the inauguration from happening, except God. Except God. Because it's God, your reliefs, mm. to then. You start from there. You can't sense. go straight to the... Direct. We've seen mm. some odd things happening by lawyers who ought to know the law. It shouldn't even be we ordinary uh, <laughs> Not even a uh, year one or year two student of law. You can't go straight, you can't approach the Supreme Court straight because the Supreme Court will simply dismiss your matter on the matter of jurisdiction. Yeah. You can't just approach the Supreme Court direct. Makes no sense. And people who have uh, uh, taken pre election matters before tribunals, I pity them because the outcome is very predictable. The law is the law. It can, it, it's. It's in the nature of the African or nay Nigerian, you know. If if you lose an election, you you must not let go. Unfortunately, mm. that is the way some of our politicians are wired. You know, the thing that surprises me is this: when you say that inauguration should not hold until matters in court are determined. determined yeah. What president? Are we going to sign? In 1999, uh, APP and AD, which used Falai as their presidential candidate against Obasanjo, they went to court 
The judgment was not given, if I'm not mistaken, some six months or almost one year after the inauguration of President Obasanjo. In 2003, the same thing happened. Obasanjo was sworn in. Uh, I think it was Yara um, uh, um, Buhari. He went to court yeah. before the case was decided. In 2007, Yara Dua was sworn in. Mm, the case was decided in 2006. 2006. I, I was in the Supreme oh. Court. So, that's three years down the line. Yes. 2007, the same thing with the late Yara Dua. So, why will 2023 be different? What will be the reason the court will cite to say that, okay, uh, don't uh, inaugurate the president and the president-elect until, until we finish the matter. Then, between their time and when they will decide, who will be the president? I mean, uh, some so, of them have suggested that Buhari should remain in office. <laughs> the same Buhari they The same Buhari they, didn't, they don't like. Oh. Look, the same Buhari they honestly, claim has been cloned. I just think that... When, when people have lost, that's why I said there is so much hatred about exactly, this. Exactly, they should just go home mm -hmm. and begin to prepare for 2027. Simple. Or yes. wait for the final judgment after May 29 or whichever. This is the one that Judy, I mean, we said the other day, we quoted Otto von Bismarck. He said, mm -hmm. politics is not an exact science. Of course. Of and, course it's not. It's is, not. In <laughs> politics, you can't say two plus two. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, equals uh, four. Four. Mm -hmm. They were saying at 22. Oh, of course. But it's logical. Yeah. So what you expect to happen, what you expect to happen by convention, mm. may not happen in politics. That's why political punditry is a very, very difficult uh, Very, very, game. very. Because you never can tell what will happen next. You can At times when you You know happens. the Americans, when Donald Trump won mm. in uh, 2016, when he won the election, American political prophets, they were stunned. political pundits, they were stunned. and the big-time journalists in their country, they, were stunned. they came okay. together and they were asking, how come we didn't see this coming? Mm -hmm. yes, I was watching um, uh, uh, Farid uh, Zakaria. How come we didn't see this? We all got it wrong. <laughs> Nobody gave they, Trump a chance. They are human. They are human. They never gave Trump a chance. Even all and the world stars didn't give him yes. a chance at all. So that's that. politics for you. And political, political punditry Political predictions are not exact science. No, they're not. Because we were told by some pollsters that Peter Obi would defeat uh, Juan Kwaso in Kano. Yes, I mm. still have those those uh, um, uh, the, uh, those reports by those pollsters. Mm. You know, they said he would defeat uh, Juan Kwaso in Kano, and we yeah, we were analyzing and we were laughing. How can people sit in the U.S. Or wherever, and that, or wherever <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm predict that Peter Obi would defeat uh, um, mm. Mm. Kwan Kwan so in Kano yeah. <laughs> by, the, by, the, by the lingo of the streets in Nigeria. They will ask the question, are you whining me? <laughs> if you said that, yeah, exactly. by current lingo, lingo. In, yeah. on the street uh, in our are country, you whining maybe me? you are not, well, you are not <laughs> on the street anymore. They will ask the question, are you whining me? <laughs> so whining, so whining. Yeah. You know? So, so, how can, so, you, how so, can you make that kind so of... Uh, simply, <laughs> so many folks are not yet done with us. But clearly, we must move on. We regardless. must move on. The train has left the station. We must bear right. in mind that they are there and um, they yeah. won't leave us alone. They are doing their jobs. Mm. Anyway. Their, their job, they, uh, what they want to do is see Nigeria fall. And mm. true patriots must tell themselves that, look, this is a battle that we must fight. Uh, after all, we are, as we agreed, at least those of us who have not given up on our country. Yeah. There are many people who have given not. up on our, on mm. our country. In, in, we agreed the other day yes. there was a country here. Oh, there was. That country can come back. It will. Inshallah. Okay. To our next story. You know, at long last,
what is reputed to be the world's largest single grain petroleum refiner. Uh, the Dangote refinery has been officially inaugurated. President Muhammad Buhari, who inaugurated the momentous edifice at the Lekki axis of Lagos, described the 650,000 barrel per day refinery as a milestone for the Nigerian economy and a game changer for the downstream petroleum market in the African continent. Now, the federal government stands to save a whopping 7 trillion naira in the next five years, barring any inexactitude, inexactitude in the system. Now, chairman of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, has hinted that the first product of the gigantic edifice should hit the market by July this year. That's uh, less than a month and a half. It can only get better. But let's take you back to the inception of the project and show you how the then Governor Babatunde Fashola prepared the ground for the success story of the refinery uh, by getting the buy in of the host community. Please come with us. Most of you pay a fair walk or refinery for him be. Say, Roti, a bell, Roti. Modeni, say, a femo come out below. Kill a song by him. Say, if a teba no word about fair, no one is okay. Aha. I want you, yes, I think, but miss is what you hear. Se mo pa le gbe kini lo si Badagri sha Badagri gangan le po wa Se fe abe fe O ti be yin Eh eh eyin te ba fe dide ke ma lo Eyin te ba ti fe dide ke ma lo ka mo ya wa toku Now, Mo fale en yon mode lò wò mo de fale en yon agbala gba lò wò. O do wò yon. Iro yon. Si ma gbe yon wà. O di yon wò yon. Ah, ok. Awa lè mba nò jà wò. Ti o ba kou di e katou. Awa ni ke to wà. Bukba wa ba yi. Kusi kwa konti yo le rimi nou wa. Jyon si zo koutade. Baba mini. Bamu. Baba wani. KLM. Baba wani. Toba kudye. Ema lò nou kini kele lò bani shen wwa jya wo. Eri bi nou mba yen wo. New beginnings are always colorful. When we celebrate the start of life's journey, we marry in colors. With our proudly Nigerian Dulux paints, now available in any color, express your world however you want it. Visit a Dulux color center to get any color instantly. Dulux, let's color. As they count... All right, folks, uh, so uh, Inca, as, as I said, at long log last, the refinery is here. Uh, great expectations and so on. But, you know, I talked about the inexactitudes in the system. Uh, you, you know, oil theft, uh, vandalization of uh, pipes and so on and yeah. so on. But mm -hmm. Dangote is a private businessman. Yes. The only thing that will be different there is that it is not government business. Mm. It is a private business. So the man will put 
the right spade in the right hole. Mm. And then, we believe that anything an individual does usually succeeds. Why is it that government uh, parastatals fail? Why is it that government business fail? Because everybody goes there and see it as a national cake from which to take. But, but, but Remember, you, you and I know that we didn't start this way. Well, the unfortunate thing is that are we going to blame the founding fathers? Are we going to blame the military? Or who are we going to blame? Because in all honesty, I believe very strongly mm. that as we have had unbroken 24 years of democracy now, if the 1979 election and the 1981-83 election had been allowed to stand, mm. uh, the late Buhari, um, Shagari had been allowed to fumble and wumble through his second term, mm. by the next election, we we'll perhaps have corrected ourselves. Because, but now, what we are talking about now is that, look, this refinery is owned by a single individual. Well, you, the government might have shares and all that, but the man will not fail, and will not open his eyes, and see you make a mess of it. Because if it is, if it is a government business now, of exactly, if it is a government business now, it is on this same program we have asked this question several mm. times. Are there no engineers in NNPC? Why is it that our the the refineries are failed. Yeah. Don't be surprised that some engineers in NNPC will be looking for job in this place now, or will have enough a job in this place now, if they find them worthy. Mm. Then the question you will ask is, how did you make it that the one that is run by government failed? Mm. That you now want to come and work in a private refinery? When they get there, they will change. It is the same thing in the 60s, 70s, 80s. When government newspapers were falling apart and yeah. the things were... Private newspapers came, the it industry over. changed. Mm -hmm. The same thing with private TV stations and radio. Mm -hmm. So, the truth of the matter is that when people invest and put their money down, Nobody will come there and think it is government money. Because now, you will now say that, okay, um, because NNPC is cited in Lagos, mm -hmm. you must employ a Lagosian. If you see somebody from the other side who is more qualified or whatever, yeah. you say, no, we have to take... So, but in this case, it won't be. Dan Gote will not say that because it is cited in Lagos or because he's a Hausa man, he must employ outside people to yeah. do the job or only employ negotiations. They will employ the best. So what we need to do also is to make sure that whatever business that the government runs, everybody comes. When you go to the NNPC or wherever, they have some uh, free free well that they give some government officials. Yeah. This will not happen in a private in a private invest in, mm. in investment business. So the only thing I my I, only regret sort of is that oh, is it regret government or fear? Uh, fear okay if government we are basking and wallowing and uh, you will tell it's the biggest in Africa in the world in this in that it is not the size that matters. Because you, as a government, mm. it is because you failed that That's this, why came this is in. coming. And I believe also that Dangote will be very, very happy with himself if the late Yaradu had not reversed the sale of Portaco refinery to him. Mm. He wouldn't have thought of building this one. Yeah. It was the, that reverser that jeered him on and said, oh, What the heck? Let me start. I can do it. Uh, something all over. And we thank God by July, but we should not rejoice yet. Because yet. everybody is saying, ah, fuel price will come down. 
How? The man is a businessman. He, he wants to recoup his investment. So, <laughs> as much as I will, I love it. That okay. But I hope we will not be also disappointed that twelve queues will disappear mm. because because it is privately owned. Well, my hope is half raised, yeah. but the remaining half is still. You, you adopt a look see at uh -huh. it. because uh, sometimes Nigeria, when you raise your hope very high, the first Some, flight, something breaks in the middle, and then you are disappointed. G GD, I, I'm I'm rather. Uh, enthralled by the seven trillion naira which we think government would make, not impossible. No, it will save. Oh, save rather. Mm. You know, um, that is one of the um, <coughs> advantages that we would derive from this uh, venture. Yes, um, as I said yesterday, that hotel refinery is not the biggest in the world. Mm. It's just the biggest single train, which means a single unit that refines crude to various variants, to different variants, like kerosene, jet A1, and the rest of them. It's not the biggest refinery in the world. People, Nigerians keep saying it's the biggest. And the people say single train, they know what they are talking about. But Nigerians are not... I didn't say good thing. Just say it's the biggest. The biggest refinery in the world is in India, with a capacity about double what this refinery would do. Because the refinery in India um, has the capacity to refine 1.240 million. Yes, hmm. per day. Yes, that's like double what. Uh, so hmm. it's not the biggest. But all that people need to do is check. It's not the biggest. It's the biggest single train. That means one unit, you know, um, turning crude oil to, to all, all kinds of, of uh, uh, variants. And all that. Yeah, so it's, we, the point has to be made. It's not the biggest. It's the seventh biggest in the world. That's its place. Seventh biggest. Now, we, we spend a good chunk of the money that NMPC made, makes from crude oil sales is spent on subsidy bills. Even when the National Assembly does not appropriate money to the NMPC, on their own from crude oil sales, they mm. will, they will okay. pay for subsidy. And we've been losing a lot of money as a result of this. Now, we make money from crude oil, but we now import PMS. We Petrol. import PM, PMS with mm -hmm. a good chunk of the money that we make from crude oil sales. All the big oil producers in the world are smiling to the man. They are happy now very, because very. of the war in Ukraine. Yeah. Saudi, they are, they Aramco, are, Aramco they, they, they are making record profit, record revenue at this time. Nigeria is not making anything. Apart from the fact that um, oil theft mm. went rapidly high, the matter of us importing refined uh, product cost us a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Now, <laughs> what they are talking about here is because you are going to be refining locally, you save this money that normally you will have spent paying uh, for, uh, yes, paying those refineries abroad to yeah. refine for you. You then load them in big vessels. Um, they um, come hey, here. Hey. All of those associated costs, mm. they, which the, drive up even the price. Because the landing cost, of course, the landing cost of price of a uh, uh, okay. PMS, yeah. uh, bears in mind all of those associated costs, costs associated with bringing it all the way from that place. Mm. Some they, they I'm, go, I'm sometimes we go the, the ships birth offshore. Yes, to, to, you will to pay to the ships shore. that will you will pay the ships. Badges and yes, that. you will pay the refiners. You the export company. a single product and you import know? several. So now. 
we just need, they've laid the pipeline, they said the pipeline is 1,110 1, kilometers from the source of food in the Niger Delta to uh, Lekki, and then you just produce. So all of those freight costs and the rest, gone. Gone, gone. So they are saying that over five years we can actually save that much. One, I mean, uh, seven, uh, seven, seven, seven trillion. trillion. So that seven trillion, we can use it for some something else. Deploy it. You can use it for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Why are we taking loans all over the place? It's because we are not making enough money. We are not earning. We are not earning enough money. Now, why are we not earning enough money? This subsidy is a big reason for us not earning enough money. Because if an NPC were to simply release all that it, uh, it, it makes, makes yeah. without having to take a huge chunk of it for and use so it as subsidy, subsidy and the rest, you yeah. know how much will come to because we are in, we, we reach a point now we are subsidy a bill is approaching like six trillion uh, in a year. That is why so, uh, that's killing. So if we can save this money, uh, good. I mean, it, it's good for everyone. And Dangote refinery, yes, it's, a, it's 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 going to Dangote is going to maximize profit. That is its nature. So maximize profit from this uh, 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 line of business. Already now we've been told that um, is going to build. Um, I mean, they are going to, it's going to go into retail okay, business. Yeah, that's yeah. Very, so yeah. it's going to build uh, go to uh, filling stations all over the place. Mm. Already he has imported um, trucks, mm. more than uh, fifteen thousand trucks already that are going to be used for that retail business. So. They prepare to see Dangote filling stations the same way you are seeing NNPC. NNPC and so it will, it will yeah. be on a greater scale yeah. than NNPC. So he's going to make money from the, the, uh, what he is refining. He's going to make so much money. And with him also having patrons from America, Asia, and the rest. All over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, more foreign exchange will come into exactly. our country. So there is a lot uh, to gain from this. Then, but we, we can break the subject of uh, removing all subsidy. No, oh, that is inevitable. Yeah. We have to get to the point when it gets removed. Uh, Dangote uh, refinery will not crash the price of uh, it. Won't. It That's will not crash. Really... At best, maybe a marginal. Yeah. Uh, re reduction. Yeah. And it's not affect PMS it, it, alone. It, it, all it, it, the, it would all the same go into competition. Yes. Yeah. Market. You know, market forces will yeah. eventually make this thing One come thing down. One we, thing we will be sure of is that, or we should be sure of, there will be no force. And I know that this man too is a no, square scarcity will be we'll thrown be. out of the window. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, this man too from Kano. Rano. No. Um, um, Bua. Okay, well, uh, yes. Abdul Samad is yes, Arabi, yes. also building his own refinery. So I like the, no, the healthy uh, competition. Good. Dangote needs to improve his relationship with host communities. Okay. That is the impulse of, of, uh, what, import saw, of what former governor. Because, yes, because Fashola responded to the crisis he had with the community. Yeah, that's when he went there and said, see, if you have any problem, mm. talk to us directly. It is we that you should talk to. Mm. Don't go attacking their facilities and all that. You know, I remember when he, when he said, uh, I, I, I live uh, in, in, your hands. in your heart. He said, no, in God's hands. <laughs> so in, in some of the places where he has set up companies, he's always had this crisis with host communities. So I just hope now that... That is in the past. That because for them to have even gotten to this point, yeah. it means that they've been, they've been doing some things yeah. right. So, and that's what we want to see continue. So, um, uh, the foreign exchange that we used to spend on importing petrol, uh, we, we cease by God's grace. That is, uh, let's not speak with exactitude. Yeah. Uh, let's, we hope that they will definitely talk. Because I know some people in our country, if there's anything that uh, they make money through, they will do their best to ensure that. To ensure that, <laughs> yeah. They frustrate the yeah. system. Mm. 
Well, uh, again, we, are, we, had, a, we had said uh, Dagote is a private individual. He's a businessman. Yes. So he's in business to make money. Oh, sure. Maximize, uh, maximize profit, uh, reduce uh, expenditure. His own what? expenditure. That, and all that's that. it. Yeah. And, so on. Mm -hmm. and the buy-in of Nigeria is very important. We must be patient. Yes. We, we need patience now. Um, More than at any for, time. For instance, we expect the products to start rolling out in July. Yes, it's at the end of, uh, well, uh, yeah. so, right so, up to August. So, so, and uh, so we, we can be sure now what happened last year when we were thrown into an unavoidable yeah. West scarcity. Yeah. Because they brought in some uh, smelly, dirty yeah. uh, petrol from somewhere. That. At least we can be sure now that if that uh, whatever petrol is being sold there, must have come from yeah. Dangote. Yeah. All right, folks, let's go to our last story. You know, six days hence, the president, Muhammad Buhari, a government would bow out of office. Well, granted, his scorecard is a mixed bag, yet his legacy in the area of inf infrastructure development remains indomitable. That cannot be overpowered. Mm. Uh, the second Niger Bridge, conceptualized in 2005, but completed and ready for use by the present administration has been officially inaugurated along with six other legacy projects undertaken by the Federal Ministry of Works. The others include two major bridges and three federal secretariats plus a ring road. At least the attempt at tackling infrastructure deficit is a bold one. Or what do you say? Well, the, you can say anything about Buari. This is a president who has done very well in the area of infrastructure. Um, we see the result of money well utilized. When he was looking for money to complete the Lagos Banana Expressway as well as the Second Niger Bridge, mm. because when Fashola, I interviewed Fashola and he told me that Mr. President called him and said, See, there are three roads that you may have your own ideas mm. about what you want to do in this ministry, but three roads are important to me, and I want to complete them. Lagos Ibadan Office, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Second Niger Bridge, and the Kaduna. Uh, I mean, Abuja. and the Abuja Kaduna Kano yeah. uh, Highway. Uh, you know, that's the first Dwakari way in northern Nigeria. Mm. Uh, it was uh, IBB that uh, completed it at that time. But what this president has done is to completely rebuild the road to the point that, in some cases, even bridges, mm. bridges be had to down. be pulled down so that they can do a fresh one or even bypassed. So I was in Kano the other day. I saw the quality of the work, and I'm like, wow, it's so beautiful what they are doing. I call it complete, um, uh, complete, what is it called? Complete rebuilding, reconstruction. So, hopefully, they've done 200 kilometers out of 360 kilometers. Of uh, 160 more? Yeah, so they, they have now inaugurated the completed part. The incoming administration will be able to, to do the put that road to bed. But he has completed others. At, uh, the Second Niger Bridge, mm. fantastic. I did a documentary about it. Fantastic road. Even Dulos Baja introduced new technology in dealing with the swampy area okay. of that road. Yes. You know? So you cannot say that the president has not done well in that area. The local water bridge is going to reduce travel time by people moving from the southeast mm. to Abuja and other areas. We'll reduce travel time by at least three hours. You know, the bridge East. is over the Benue River. Yeah. You know, uh, around Nas it connects Nasarawa okay. with Benue. Yes. Yeah. And those traveling from the east using that road, they will save three hours of travel time. And that's quite, quite some time. Yes, and don't also forget, um, NDLA officials are being murdered. Mm. 
the operatives are being murdered. And the president has said, OK, let's build barracks for them. So they are going to have their own barracks so that their staff can be localized in one in area. One place. And that way, their lives will be uh, a yeah. lot more secure. Yeah. So I'm talking about even um, other infrastructure that this man has delivered, airports and all that. So he has really done well in the area of infrastructure. You know, he has really done well. And um, I know that Nigerians will not forget him in that area. Yes, some of them have been named after him. Uh, the top main, I mean, uh, the second Niger Bridge has been named after him. Even if projects are not named after Buhari, people will remember that he was the one who completed yeah. those projects, who delivered those projects. And history will be kind to him in that area. And some of his failures and frailties will be overlooked. We, we, we live to posterity. Yinka, um, the Secretariat at Oka is one of the legacy projects we, we understand you're yes. going to commission. Um, you know that... Uh, and two other ones. That's so that, the, that will um, be the one fourth. One in Baesa, the other mm. one in uh, because Zafara. Those states, since they have created, have had no federal secretariat. So, okay. it is a project that will be a... His name, I mean, the, that at yeah. least it was under his imprint. Exactly, that it was completed. And as BK was said, um, when you look at the governments we, uh, we have had since the return of democracy, and you look at the issue of infrastructure and the deficit, as, well, um, the deficit is also part of it, but uh, let us look at that infrastructure first. Whether uh, they are worth, the, the deficit is another matter entirely. Okay. But we look at it and say, yes, this man has done good. There are some areas in which he has failed. He's human mm. because there is no way any human being can. No in fact, no perfect. government can complete any project. No, even if we have all the resources in the world, you cannot complete all, the, and you cannot be. Your government can never satisfy every strata of the society. As we are talking of infrastructure can, now, that, that's the second Niger Bridge. Yeah, take, I mean, take a look. Mm. Then another thing we should talk about because is also mm, maintenance. Maintenance, yeah. Because mm. Nigeria... This one will be told now, so hopefully... Uh -huh. We have that beauty of this, doing... This is the old bridge. This is the old one. And the green lock. I remember when I was doing my youth service in Anambra, we used to... Old Anambra State, we used to pass through... I mean, it's terrible. Mm. Hours. But that was a foregone conclusion now, yeah. hopefully. So, as I was saying, there are those... Who will look at that side is like when you have a cup. Some will see it half full and some will see it half empty, depending on which side of the divide they belong. That's it. Infrastructure, what has done very well, but there are also those who have lost loved ones who will say, avoidably. Uh, exactly. Who will tell you that what is infrastructure? If I have my this and is alive. So, give and take, um, history will be, we judge him, but as we always say, who writes history? History is written by man. By man. And man will take materials from sources. So, it depends on which source you take your material. Yeah. So, that's what we. Determine the kind of history you are going to write. Yeah. You, you, you see, uh, yeah, in six days, he would have uh, completed his tour of duty, eight years. Mm. Uh, the, future, the future generations would remember his legacy projects. Yes. And uh, they ask questions and, and so on. It will go into the history books. Yes, and you know, infrastructure is one way by which you can even stimulate 
economic growth yeah. Yeah. in an area. For example, where people lack roads and they are very good in agriculture, how do they move their produce mm. to urban centers where they will be, they will be sold? Mm. That's why it's important to take infrastructure development to the nooks and, and crannies, crannies the country. of our country so that this inclusion that we are talking about will not simply be about um, 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 putting people in, in, in the various offices. Yeah. Inclusion, when you are talking about national inclusion issue, mean that development is taken everywhere to the vulnerable. Yeah. Vulnerable yeah. societies, vulnerable communities, you know. So, why so why are criminal headsmen able to kill people and get away with it in, in Plateau and other places? A lot of those communities, those in, remote communities, in, inaccessible. they do not have roads. Mm. Yeah. So even if you raise an alarm, mm. before, before, help comes, before help comes, the beds will have flown. Have flown. So I, this, is, this is the problem. All right. I, gentlemen, I, we must go here and now. But let me thank uh, Yinka Oyegbile for coming. Thank you very much. Biko, many, many thanks. Thanks. Yeah. All right, we are done. Um, the program returns tomorrow at the same time. Join us then. But if you missed any part of this program, there's 11 o'clock tonight where the repeat broadcast will be on. And of course, on Sunday, we expand the field for, for you from 1.30 to 3.30. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash PVC News Nigeria. I'm Citizen Jones. Bye-bye now. Truck has been hit. We need backup transportation. Over. When chaos becomes the order of the day, <laughs> corruption knows no boundaries. So you want us to drug Jimmy to get him out of the way? And oppression gets to have a 